Hey, my YouTube friends, welcome back. Today is October the 4th, 2022, and today we need to talk about Xpeng. So Xpeng has started its G9 SUV flagship delivery, but right after that, the Xpeng stock hit the all-time low of just $11.32 per share. So as of today, we can see Xpeng's market capital has barely above is barely above $10 billion. And yeah, of course, there's um, a lot of headwinds ahead of Xpeng, but with the new all-time low valuation of Xpeng stock, it actually opens some opportunities for, for the stock to have a more room ahead to grow. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few of the red flags of Xpeng and why it the stock price tanked so much and, and uh, what's the kind of problems is Xpeng is facing ahead. And also, I'm gonna talk about the a few opportunities or long-term advantages of Xpeng. So to help help us help you to make a decision, should we consider to invest in the stock now or should we stay away from the stock for a period of time? So yeah, first let's take a look at this news that Xpeng announced the vehicle delivery results for September and the third quarter 2022 and the G9 flagship SUV, as we mentioned, uh, has started delivery in September. So in this news that um, Xpeng delivered 8,468 vehicles in September 2022, and the quarterly total delivery was 29,570. So the September delivery is significantly lower than Neo or Lialdo's delivery in this month, and that definitely causes some troubles and uh, hurdles to Xpeng stock price. So if we look at the breakdown of the delivery numbers this month, so this month the 8,400 68 smart is consisting of 4,634 P7, the uh, company smart sports sedan, 2,417 P5, and uh, 1,233 G3. And also they delivered 184 G9 flagship SUV. So this is uh, quite similar to Neo because Neo has just started to deliver its ET5. Also, we can see the total deliveries in third quarter 2022 reached 29,000, rep representing a 15% increase year over year. And this is 15% is definitely slowing down. The growth is slowing down. It's just very hard for Xpeng to, to keep the pace, the growing pace as a few years ago. So here are the few red flags, in my opinion, for Xpeng stock to keep growing. And the first one is the overall negative market sentiment. Uh, we all know in recent months, the US stock market is really not performing well. It tanked so much for apparent reasons. The Federal Reserve is hiking the interest rate and because of the inflation problem, uh, the Federal Reserve beca becomes more and more hawkish. Definitely a lot of stocks get hard hit and Xpeng being one of them. But today we actually have some, some news uh, from Wall Street journals. We know today it actually is a pretty good day uh, in the U.S. stock market. The, the three index indexes have grown significantly up two to three percent, and I think most of the reasons is that because of this reason: the U UN calls on Federal Reserve, calls on Fed, other central banks to halt interest rate in in increases. And in a subsequent news conference, Federal Reserve Chairman Jeremy Powell said the central bank does take account for impact its policies have on the rest of the world, but would continue to lift interest rates to bring inflation down under control. And he said, we are very aware of uh, what's going on in the other economies around the world and what that means for us. And that's what uh, he said, the, for the forecast that we put together, that our staff puts together and that we put together on our own, always take all of that, try to take all of that into account. So that means the, uh, I, I'm not sure how much the Federal Reserve will like take this into account and adjust the interest rate hiking in the near future, but this is definitely something good for the short-term liquidities in the US stock market. Then, as I just mentioned, this is one of the big reasons why today we have, we, we've seen the stock market uh, increase so much. So we'll uh, watch closely to see if the Federal Reserve changes attitude to become like less hawkish and to start like slowing down the hi hiking the interest rate, that'll definitely like bring the stock market some some breeze, some breeze time, some ease. And that may result in Xpeng as well, 
right? Because we, we mentioned Xpon is the like growing stock and it needs more tolerance from the market, from the stock market. But, but for now, the overall negative market sentiment is hurting Xpon stock price. That's the first red, red flag. And the set, second red flag is China's economy is slowing down. Uh, and there's no secret about that China's economy is slowing down because China is existing in its uh, dynamic zero COVID policy, as well as prioritizing other politics topic topics over the economic growth. So according to this news here, that hurts the China's economic growth the most, one of the biggest reasons is the dynamic zero COVID policy. And so far, there's no immediate zero COVID exit plan. Previously, there are some experts saying that China is probably going to give up this um, dynamic zero COVID policy right after the, the 20s Communist Party's Congress. But now, more and more analysts are leaning towards the opinion that China will not immediately lift the restrictions after the 20th CCP Congress, not until March next year, uh, when like the new government, the new government is finalized. Only after that, the organization is stable and they'll start to rolling out the new policies, maybe to change the dynamic zero COVID policy and to coexist with COVID in, in, in mainland China. Uh, in the near future, there's almost a half a half year that China is probably still going to stick with the dynamic COVID zero policy and mass, massive cities lockdowns could disrupt the supply chain as well as hurting the confidence from consumers buying expensive cars. They'll like try to preserve more cash just in case of any emergencies because of their they're not sure what's laying ahead of them. They're, they don't have a the Chinese citizens, they don't have a, a clear picture of what's the future will look like and if there's gonna be like disruptions in their in their lives and lockdowns and restriction, all of all those kind of things. That the uh, dynamic COVID zero is hurting the supply chain, is hurting the consumer's confidence and China's economy is slowing down. And the third flag actually is quite related to the second one. That is the G9 demand. The, the uh, Xpeng vehicles demand is in big trouble. We have a dedicated video uh, a couple of weeks ago talking about Xpeng's demand issue. Xpeng is cutting its retail price significantly to increase the the uh, demand, and that hurts Xpeng's margin by a lot. So I pull out the Xpeng's reports for the second quarter 2022 the financial results. Um, Xpeng actually has the lowest margin among all these popular. EV startups, including Neo, including Li Auto. Uh, of course, Tesla is not, is not a startup anymore. And Tesla has a really high gross margin. And Xpeng is the lowest among them all. And from this chart, we can see the gross, the gross margin of Xpeng in the first quarter, in the second quarter this year is just 10.9%. And that's much lower than even the first quarter of this year and lower than the same period of uh, last year. And the third quarter is only going to be worse because Xpeng is cutting its retail price, right, to increase the demand. Demand, and uh, but there there is hope. Uh, the G9, the new flagship SUV from Xpeng, is actually have a higher, much higher retail price. And we need to see if Xpeng has any way to increase its gross margin. And here comes the a few green flags. So the first one is there. there's hope from G9 to increase the gross margin. So G9 is a new flagship SUV from Xpeng and it has a much higher retail price and has a much higher margin, supposedly. We can we can see G9 has a pretty decent pre-orders. Um, here in this in this news, it says G9 got, gets 22,000, almost 23,000 pre-orders in just 24 hours. So I'm assuming the cumulative uh, pre-orders would be much bigger number than this one, the 23,000, because this is a news on August the 11th, and we're, we're like two months into this, this news. And based on, based on the data from NEO's ET5, ET5 has over 200,000 pre-orders. I'm not expecting Xpeng G9 has that kind of number, but uh, Xpeng G9 definitely has, has uh, partially resolved the demand issue from uh, from Xpeng's ex existing vehicle models because Xpeng, Xpeng's as good as P7, Xpeng P7, it is like years long model and people need some refreshment and they want, they want new car models, they want improvements, they want new hardware, new look, and G9 is des designated to, to deliver that. And the second green flag for Xpeng is Xpeng actually has a lot of uh, competitive 
advantages over its competitors. Xpeng actually has a very strong technology, including its navigation guided pilot, which uses the high precision maps to be part of the pilot's assistance. And it, it results in a very, very strong autonomous driving results, uh, which is pretty good. And X1 gets consistently gets high safety ratings from from European communities, from uh, other countries. And in this news here, just a couple of days ago, just two days ago, we, we see X1 received the third consecutive MS, MSCI ESG rating of AA, achieves industry leading DJSI scores, and all the safety ratings for Neo is looking pretty good among its its uh, rivals. So this is a strong. These are the strong advantages uh, for Xpeng in the long run, and I think it's it's really good. The third green flag is that Xpeng actually has a very good long-term plan compared with Neo and uh, with Liotto. You can arg arguably say Neo has the advantages of being able to swap its batteries, but some people also think because because Neo try tries to build uh, many. Swap battery swap stations. It increased the total battery occupancy because you need you need the, the the spare batteries in those swap stations, right? And also that increased the operation cost of Neo. Uh, but X1 is us using a more mainstream and more clean solution to uh, try to increase the, the recharge speed of its fleet. So X1 actually has this four four hundred and eighty volt faster charging technology in its G9, and it can charge the vehicle that can can drive up to 200 kilometers in just the five minutes. And Xpeng is like actually enhancing on the uh, charging speed and charging network instead of building like swap stations and use other technologies like use the range extended technologies as the Li Auto. Because eventually we know we'll transition into a fully electric area, no internal combustion engine, right? So Li Auto is kind of in a transition Kind of, uh, kind of in a transition solution. I, I know this transition period is long enough for Liotto to to live to survive really, really well in five, ten, maybe maybe fifteen years, twenty years. But Xpeng is more like a end solution, end game solution. It's it's the closest to what Tesla is pushing for that build a massive charging network and to leverage the really, really fast the charging speed for its uh, fleet. So. That is the third green flag. And the fourth green flag that Xpeng stock might have a chance is that it, it's been too hard. I mean, Xpeng's valuation is is one third of Neo right now, and one third of Li Auto, and one third of Rivian. And Xpeng is not really that behind. I we we all know that Xpeng has a lot of like challenges ahead of it, including the the, the margins and including all the red flags we, we just mentioned. But it's just one third of those uh, EV startups valuation. It makes me feel there's a door, there's a potential door opened up for opportunities for Xpeng stock because any good news from Xpeng or from the general market, the broader market may stem the stock price back to much higher level than it is currently right now. And, and I'm tempted to do some short term trade for Xpeng. Uh, that's just my thoughts and I've listed the three red flags and the four green flags for Xpeng. So yeah, I hope those uh, information are helpful for you to, to see where Xpeng is at, to help you to understand um, Xpeng's current situation and to make decisions. All right, that's everything I wanna share in this video. If you like those kind of information and if you like this video, please consider to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.